Oh boy, it's A-side content for once. <laughs> Man, I spent hours recording. Uh, uh, this game is in um, stuff. Let's, let's just take a look. I was told this might be fun. I was told this might be fun. This is a cozy... <clears throat> no. Let's read this like someone who lives out in the front here, because I got that kind of vibe going on right now. In this cozy shopkeeping game, you're a little goblin with big dr you're a little goblin with big dreams. In the employ of Elmon, the ant kindly antique dealer who works upstairs, your goal is to sell trinkets and save up enough money to start up your very own archaeology business. Now we're talking real archaeology, not the kind where you go to Egypt and steal all their goddamn garbage and call them heathens and, and barbarians and say they can't take care of their stuff. We're talking proper archaeology, don't worry. <laughs> It's a bit of a nasty term nowadays, ever since I burnt down that orphan's house to get my hands on some historical relics. We'll talk about that. <laughs> the torch is still burning in his hand. Ah, uh, what a man. That's how you know he's got <laughs> gumption and je ne sais quoi. And moxie. Maybe a little chutzpah on the side if he's got it. A sacks of gobble knows what are delivered at your shop every day. So chip away the dirt to find what's hiding underneath. Sell them as is or spend some time cleaning them to hawk them at a high price. Once you've got a sponge, of course. <laughs> Manage your time, make the most of every day. Or just enjoy pottering and you Oh, that's cute. All right. I gotta drag that sack onto the mat with the left mouse button and get LMB. I love it when they say LMB, but equip the chisel with left mouse button and then use it on the sack to begin chipping. It's a sack. You can't chip a sack. I can pull pulls down with right mouse button. Give me my stuff. Dispose. Look at the physics. They're going just nuts. Oh, that is really bad. You should probably... Probably not do that. Ooh, that, that took my time out of my time clock. Chip away at Cruft to reveal trink trinkets. Chipping away with left mouse button will gradually reveal the trinket hiding underneath. If you chip away any parts contained the trinkets, they're marked automatically. Rotate the whole lump by dragging with the right mouse button and reset the view with the button at the top left of the screen. Thank you. Let's have, let's have a look see what we're looking at. Bam! 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 <gasps> we got a, a bottle and I got nine dirt! <laughs> Yeehaw! Congratulations, you got your first trinket. Store it in your stash by dragging it and dropping it over. You can use the left mouse button on the stash to open it, check out your lovely hoard, and drag stuff back out of it. There's a stash book on your workbench and the customer deck. Oh, that's nice. Eh. I'm clicking my mouse button. Why isn't it dropping this? Hello? Oh, there you go. I gotta, gotta, gotta put it somewhere nice. This should just... Dis universal. This missile is universal. Don't do that locally. It's dumb. Ooh. I could, I could turn on my candles and, and spend a whole bunch of goddamn money on that. What's this? Mustache. Boink. I got a, I got a bottle. I want to look at my bottle. Where, where's my nine dirt? I was promised nine dirt. Como, what the, f what are you doing in this game, Como? Why are you here? Get out of here. I'm playing a video game, Como. Please. Um. There's nothing going on here. I guess the shopkeeper just decided to, to leave. Oh, look at this. This is a cute little bet. That's bad for your back, though. All right, Como, we'll talk there to you. Such thing as trash. There is no such thing as trash. A good day to you. I have heard you're the goblin to, to come to when in search of certain rare items. You've come to the right goblin. I am, in fact, looking for a airpin. I have had no such luck for months now, and I'm at my wit's end. I do hope your reputation is well deserved. Golden opportunity. I'm after any airpin. Oh, god dang it. I need more crud. Back, produce some, please. Oh, mighty sack. <gasps> I got 12 dirt. Now that's the real prize. used up all your time for today. Each time you uncover a trinket, you use a one-time slot tracked on the UI on the left side of the screen. You could still buy and sell what you found, talk to NPCs, and explore your workshop. But my bag... In the stash it goes. Sir, you were looking for a hairpin? I have a hairpin, and it's really pretty. 
There is such thing as too much. Oh, however did you know? This is exactly what I was after. Deal? Hmm. I'll rub your cheeklets for a little extra. I know how lizards work. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking. He's just off. He's just scooted. Skedaddled. Drag that pouch of oats oh, down here. Why is it down here? I can't I can't grab it. I can't I can't I literally physically cannot grab this stupid pouch of coin because your user interface is garbage. Why is this possible? Congratulations, I bug tested for you. Thank you. Oh there it is. Why why does it tell me to grab something? And then it's like no, you can't you can't yet. That's even more confusing. Why is this thing not have the weird physics going? Because the other bag over there is like, woo! And this one's like, nah, no, 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 I'm lame. Don't leave coin out of your desk, please. People will just look at that and take it. Unless it's like, take a penny, leave a penny. Take a penny, leave a penny. Oh, that's how we... <laughs> that's not the design I expected at all. Oh, hey, a goblin! Hey, boss man! Ah, I told you, don't. I told you before, I don't like it when you call me boss. This is a partnership. We're socialists, god dang it! I ain't no capitalist, boss man. We benefit from our labor equally, boy. This boss of yours is a lovely old sponge, if you're after one. That'll be one hundred gold, if my math is right. Technically speaking, I said gold one hundred, but we don't talk about that here. Yeah, I gotta spend turn. Let's go for it. There you go. Better make you. You'll make better use of it than me. Don't forget, I'm taking the wagon on that trip for a couple of days, so take care of the shop while I'm away. I got a sp sponge. A sponge. You'll be able to clean more than just. You'll be able to clean trinkets. Oh, you'll be able to clean trinkets up and sell them for even more gold. You've done everything you can do for the day. Goblins don't do crunch. Also, this is a socialist shop, goddammit. We don't work harder for the boss man. You make a dollar, you make a dime. That's why you don't poop on company time. So navigate to your personal space and click on the bay to wrap things up. You know, if you were working in a capitalist shop, they would give you two cents for your hard labor, making them a full dollar. I'm just saying, boy, you better work or you're gonna be drowning. Actually, sir, wouldn't the lack of exploitative labor mean that, like, we would have more money? Yeah, but we don't talk about that here, boy. Sir, I'm not, I'm a, I'm a goblin. Boy. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> it's just hole. <laughs> this whole hark fell. It's called that because some jackass fell into the hole like an idiot. It's goblin time. I've unlocked the sponge. <laughs> give me a give me a sponge bath. Give me a sponge bath. I have all the time in the world. Why does it start in the middle? That's so weird. All right, all right, all right. How much is this bottle worth normally? Let's let's give it. Let's give the bottle a wash. Let's give it. Oh, oh, oh! I gotta. Uh. Hello, bottle, please. I dropped my sponge. Can I please pick up my sponge now? Please, I, I dropped my sponge. Eh. Eh. Rub a dub dub. Where's the scrub? Mm. There ain't nothing quite as sensual as rubbing a bottle in the morning. Gross. Rub a dub dub. Where is the scrub? Rub a dub dub. Where is the scrub? Oh, I got a shiny bottle. <gasps> Ooh. That was scary. <laughs> That's so terrifying. And five dirt. Place a dirty trinket onto the mat, and then with the sponge equipped, 
Okay, cool. That's that's what I just did. Thank you. Mm. Let's rub a dub dub this boy. Scrub a dub dub. Scrub a dub a dub a dub a dub a dub dub. Scrub a dub a dub a dub a dub a dub boo. You gotta give that inside a nice clean. That's how you know it's a professional's job. You know when you when you have a human do it, they just scrub the outside. They don't they don't give that inside a little extra lick of paint. They don't care about doing their job properly. I should know. I always spit on the inside just so they get a little extra on the road. Yeehaw. <laughs> oh, I fucking love. <laughs> I just love <laughs> when H bomber guy is like, "That's journalism." <laughs> Oh, that sure is journalism. Can I can I get my dirt yet? I want my dirt, please. Can I have my can I have my scrumptious dirt? I just I just want to lick it. Do you not know how goblins work? They just want to lick that dirt. Ooh, this looks complicated. Very interesting, Mr. Jones. Very interesting. Protected with an arcane soup. Well, that's neat. <laughs> Grandma's egg. I don't, Grandma. Give me a kiss. Look a little funky there, Grandma. Got, got a little on your nose. There you go. Got a little on your nose there, Granny. Don't worry about it, Grandma. Well, oh, there's water all over my table. Now, that's not good. Dub dub. Oh, Grandma. I never knew you were an egg. Here I was thinking you were an ovoid. Or a rhombus. You know, old people get. Actually, old people would be less angular. Because time has worn away the corners. And then they become Republicans, and suddenly they have all the corners in the world as they become edgelords. They start talking about weird things like snowflakes. Put the sponge down, goblin. I want my dirt. Why can't I have my dirt? <laughs> Aren't you the shopkeeper? What are you doing here? Oh, you're reusing assets. I get it. Hello, strange. <sighs> oh, well, I have I never. A new shop I've never visited before. Well, what fun. And hello, strange goblin, whom I've never met. That's fake stash. Hello, hello, customer I've never met. Hmm. Well, no, I'm looking for a grandma's egg. <laughs> Something you might have, perchance. They're after a cleaned... <laughs> here's here's grandma. Nicely cleaned. Mm. Thanks. Thanks, dude. <laughs> Why is it called grandma's egg? <sighs> Since when do grandmas lay egg? Live in a wild and wacky world. It's a magnificent glass. Beautiful. Ah, yes. <laughs> Let's go to bed. Wait, what does this say? Clean cruft? What is this cruft cleaning I can do? That's how I get my dirt. <gasps> I've got my dirt. Yeah, baby. Don't mind me. I'm just gonna... <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Don't ask me about the cruft. <laughs> it tastes delicious, and you can't tell me otherwise. Uh. Uh. What's this? Oh. Well, might as well. Let's see what's going on here. You know, so far this is quite simple. I don't really see what's going to keep me busy for it. I don't want to hear none of that. Well, my bags are gone. Hell, I feel like another bag. Uh, yeah, I'll put it away. Give me the goods. Give me the goods. Fine. Let's give give this a good scrub. You know, this seems nice and chill, but not necessarily something you'd want to do. Like, say what you want about... Like, a big thing that makes a uh, power wash simulator as fun as it is, and, and gives it that timeless feel... Is that it's a zen activity, you know. And you get all these little ding-a-ding-dings, and there's not much to do other than just cleaning up. And it's such a mindless activity that you just kind of have fun. I don't know if this game has this, because it's got a constant changing of flow, and it just doesn't work like that, buddy. You can't just have my flow stay changed every five seconds, because I gotta, I gotta scrub a dub dub, then I gotta go to the, to the, to the people at the store, and I gotta remind myself that this is not the kind of customer service we have in real life. So it's fine. It's fine. I shouldn't have a panic attack. So clean out a bed. See, when a human cleans out a bedpan, they just, they don't. They don't clean out your bed. <laughs> you, give that, you give that inside a little extra, a little extra goblin special. So that when they look inside, it's spick and span, it's sparkly and everything. People, people, people don't think about that. They're like, it's a bedpan, who cares? And I say, that's how you know that someone who cared did it. It's not because I wanted to lick it, and I wanted to make sure that I wouldn't get anything on my tongue when I licked it. That is unrelated. That's a rumor. And uh, definitely not true anyway, so don't worry about it. What a beautiful bedpan. Ooh, there is more. What is this mysterious shape? Only the brown bricks. Actually, do anything? Like the, if it's not brown, it's not going to be a piece of the puzzle. In addition, I can't actually break anything. <laughs> it's me. You know, I, I understand why the inside probably isn't dirty all that often, because usually the way they do this is with, like, special layers and shaders and stuff. And I imagine there's limitations what you can realistically do. Because it's all on the outside, and also the inside is just more difficult to really look at and clean. I kind of like that the floor gets wet, but it doesn't do anything. Like, it'd be cuter if this washes my dirt away. Or something. I don't know. Nah, that's not that fun, actually. That would just get in the way of, of collection. But if you gotta clean it up, you know, you gotta set your workstation up, and then you gotta set your workstation down. You can do, you can clean multiple times in a row, but then you can't accumulate dirt. That's something simple like that. It might interrupt with the flow, but it also creates its own sort of flow. You know, you gotta ask yourself: Do you want that freedom? Do you want people to do whatever the hell they want whenever they want it? Or are you gonna give them a, a rhythm? My dirt. Because, like, everyone thinks...
everyone thinks like, hey, it's a, it's a chill game, so by definition, people are gonna have fun with it being chill. It's like, that's not really how it works. Why didn't anyone tell me you were here? What do you want? I like it. The horn for drinking. Boink. What? Yeah, there's no cruft to clean game. Well, let's give it one more day. So, I wonder who Hark was, and why it was so stupid that he fell in a hole that's the size of a city. That's impressive, you know? Takes some effort to fall down a city-sized hole. Why, hello there, sir. You're, uh, larger than average. He's probably, like, bending over to look inside, too. You look like a shop that asks no awkward questions. I am looking for a cleaned bedpan. No questions, please. I have adopted a human, and he has weird needs, and has peed in the corner. If you have a sponge, that would be great. <laughs> there you go, buddy. Here, you can take it for free, just don't ask. <laughs> well, admittedly, it's got my saddle. You know, it's good for holding yarn, right? Let's go, let's go take care of some more. So aggressive. That's not. Hmm. I love the auto clicker. <laughs> nice. It's great. So. I kind of have some problems with the way this is set up, in terms of, like, from a development point of view. Because you're, you have to create all these discretionary objects, right? You gotta make all this stuff yourself. Eh. Like, none of these are gonna come flying out of, out of nowhere. You gotta make them yourself. All the assets, all the shapes. You gotta think about what you wanna do with them. Ah. What they're gonna cost? Who's gonna buy them? What's the story behind? Them? Like, what's the, here's the thing, right? Zen games are cute, but Zen games still have a point. Because the whole point is, you're doing something that feels useful, right? If if all I wanna do is, if all I wanna do is rub my face on something, I can just buy a Sudoku book and I can just rub my face on that for like an hour. Like, you gotta think to yourself, what what makes this contextually cute and fun? I guess you're a little goblin, but. I don't see where the little goblin comes in so far. I don't see the flavor that's making this delicious sandwich an actual, like, meal. Like, this is a mechanic, but it's not a game. Oh, it's so little. <laughs> it's so little. It's, now it's big. Like, is the point that we... that we archaeology... Like, looking for things, because, you know, looking at, at objects to find hidden features. That's always cute. Are we just rubbing everything? Because I like Power Wash Simulator. I like Stardew Valley. I like games where you just kind of mess around. I played that game where you disassemble objects and refix them. And that in a context them. Like, every object had its own little cute story. And you're like, it has its own cute little story. This is just junk. Clean it and sell it. That works way better when it's more aggressive. Because then it's like... Junk, and I'm selling. <laughs> and that's not happening. What? Jesus. Oh. Well, this object's rooting and tooting. You know what this reminds me of? Spectrobes. I really like Spectrobes, by the way. I love the little mining minigame you got on that. You gotta, you gotta find all these cool crystals. And I actually, in case you forgot, I did buy Spectrobes, but I haven't gotten around to actually playing it yet. Because uh, I'm completely and irrevocably obsessed with my good Bible game on my epic thing. And the game has been all my other time. It's, uh, it's not great. <laughs> it's not great. 
How many people are successful? Mandelbrot set. Hello? Relinquish your treasure bag. But that can't be good. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. Why is this one so much louder than everything else? You know, you know what could be really simple is like clean X first, or don't tap the the blue ones. You know, because that's it takes a little bit of time. Here's 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 my point. Right, zero mental energy. No one likes spending zero mental energy. Everyone likes a little bit. I can't break these blocks. There's nothing I can do to lose. There's nothing. So, so victory feels hollow, because there's this nothing I'm really doing here that can't just be done by rapidly spamming, you know? So it's got to have a, a little touch. Hey, Matsu, what's the little touch in, in... in There is none, I guess, in, in, in that power washing simulator. It's just a satisfaction of seeing a large object become clean, because it's so grimy and dirty, and it looks disgusting. And at the end, it's vibrant, it's beautiful, it's colorful. You look back, and you have the gif, and it's like, oh, look at how nice it all looks. And you feel, you feel good. This is too small scale for that sensation to really work. And this activity feels a little meh. Like, in Power Wars, there's still that thing of, like, the wider nozzles can clean less effectively. So you use them for larger surfaces, but they're not effective at getting rid of the actual crud. And there's a, a cleaning agent, which you can use in certain situations. There's the point washer, which is perfect, but small. And you have this little, tiny bit of, ma of mental math. And you got to climb on objects, and you got to find an angle. There's just enough that your brain is thinking about it. There's just enough to feel like you're actually doing something. This, I can just turn on my auto-clicker, and it solves itself at some point. And that never feels good. Because I can just play cookie-clicker for that experience, you know? It, it needs something. It needs a layer. I don't know, maybe it doesn't need a layer. I'm just being whiny. I'm just too intelligent for this game. <laughs> I'm not a goblin. <laughs> Although I shouldn't be the person to tell you that if that is the case. There's a little elevator in the back. I like how you have to slam the back the bag around to get it to relinquish its spine. Oh, I feel like indicating which surface you're, t you're, you're... Small thing. First, probably want to get rid of the goblin hand. Feels kind of in the way. Feels like a weird... Like, I'm holding the tool. Why is there a hand pointing? Two, indicate surface. Like, which surface am I touching? Am I going to hit with this? Important, because this happens. But, you know... Minor thing. Ooh. Listen, I know nothing about UX design. I just know that I've become a pedantic little, little bastard. <laughs> Ever since I started writing. A hook hand. No, that's just a stump. Let's give it one more day, because apparently it still has assets to throw at me. Um, I've just become very pedantic and aware of, like, user experience as I've begun to write and realize the flaws of my writing. I'm very much aware of the fact that, um... I love this guy. I love this little man. I love him. Uh, no. I believe I can. Yeah, okay, that's, that's about what I figured. I've just become so acute, acutely aware. Let's turn that a bit down a bit. 
I've become acutely aware of like user experience as I've been writing the uh, the five fucking high thing. And the reasoning for that is, I don't know, I've just really started thinking, and the big problem that I have right now, I don't want to fix because I think it works fine. If I ever want to make it to a professional product, then sure, I'll fix it. But the opening few chapters are goddamn awful. They are take way too long, and they, they just go on and on and on and on and on and on. Um, the opening section should just be, hi, I'm main character. Um, just a straight up hand, huh? Just a, a straight up entire human hand. That's not normal. Um, so the, the opening chapters are way too long. It takes way too long to establish things. If I were to cheapen it, I would focus on the parts that matter. What would the what would a, what a compressed version look like? Because you want to get to the audition. That's like the first major plot beat. In the meantime, I have to introduce the main cast, which is Nasser, Naomi, kind of? Yeah, Nasser, Naomi... Trish and Reed. Those are the main characters that need to be introduced in the first few chapters, because they're kind of the core. Stella and Sage and Rosa make up a secondary cast. Rosa more than anything, because she's part of Trish's B-plot. Reed's B-plot is entirely character-related. Naomi's important because she ties into the main character, but also ties into Nasser's B-plot. Stella and Sage, I guess I could tie them into Reed somehow, because they all, they all have their own thing. I kind of want to expand upon what Sage is, because Sage really doesn't get much outside of cooking. And apparently, like, the whole idea is that Reed's painting of the bus is supposed to be his thing, but, like, his artistic side never gets established. So maybe I want to focus on that. Like, maybe Reed likes painting. And the, that's, a, that's a fun idea, actually. The main character has, has certain abilities. Like, he can, he, you can go into his dreams if you're close enough because of his mind being goofy. And so Reed gets sucked in, and he sees a world that he wants to paint. A world that is so different. It's dark, it's gloomy, it's it's atmospheric. And he wants to paint it really badly. And he gets the painting bug. And so he just starts painting. That's a, that's a nice thing to give him. Like, he just doesn't know what to do with himself. He just feels this urge to express the sensation of what he really felt. But that's the main cast. you got to introduce them all. Uh, Trish, I still don't know what I want to do with Trish character-wise. All I got for her is that she's combative and, and kind of mean. But fair mean. Um... Reed is laid back. Nasser's a go-getter. Well, Nasser's thing is that he's overworked. Like, he's triple president. He thinks it's super cool. He doesn't want to drop what he's done. He's very obsessed with keeping what he has because he feels that he fills his parents or himself if he doesn't hold on to everything that he's acquired so far. So from his perspective, it's like, I gotta keep going. Which is why the main character helping him out is kind of how they, they reunite and, and get along with everything. Reed's deal, I guess, could be the painting. Like, he, he sees this world and he kind of hates how it makes him feel. It makes him feel sad and depressed. Like, normally he's laid back, and this world makes him feel something, but he's in in intoxicated by it. it. It draws him nearer. He's self-destructive. And as the world goes to end, this world better embodies how he feels, and he just isolates himself. That's a really good idea, actually. Trish says that she's busy with a project, and also he's just pissed at the main character. So anyway, you gotta introduce that. You gotta show Reed as a, as a creative, laid-back kind of type. I'm making him a bit funny, like he's a jokester, which is funny because the main character is quippy for various reasons. Actually, one reason. Um... Nasser got established that he's overworked, but he is a good brother in the end. Trisha got established the project. Rosa got established that she's there more than anything, that she's involved in the plot. Also, the main character has no fucking clue. It's <laughs> no fucking clue that any of the transgender characters are transgender, which I think is just a cute detail to have. Because Rosa doesn't ever tell anyone until the end. Um, so you gotta introduce that. The main character, you gotta introduce the whole angst. The whole part of like, oh no, I don't, I don't want. I don't belong in this world. Not do I. You got. You got to put that in there. Uh, probably some character details. The most important ones is the ability to th 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 that they stole a lot of Fang's talent. You got to introduce that music does certain things to them, that they're trying their best. You know, give them, give them a positive light to work off of, because you don't want your protagonist to be initially too unlikely. Uh, Snoop Game gets away with it, but Snoop Game redeems him, and the, that's the whole point of the story. The main character gets becomes an asshole over time. He becomes an asshole after he gets ousted, because he's like, oh, well, fuck you then. <laughs> you know, if you're just going to be mean and make this difficult for me, nah, I'm, screw you. Although he does come back with Nasser, because the main character is... He, he doesn't... The idea is that he's from a world where, where superheroes are real, and he has these powers, and they came with him, because they don't work like that. And from that idea, he wants to help people, and he just can't leave Nasser behind. And that's sort of supposed to begin the mending of the bridges, is that he just can't help himself with that. Uh, flaws, of course, being that he's a, a petty little bastard. <laughs> anyway. Um, so you gotta set up the A plot, the character's B plots. Naomi's, I don't know yet. I guess Naomi could be a bastard. She could be Trish, as she was in Snoop Game, where she wants to ruin the main character's life because they stole something. I don't know if that works. Naomi could just be an unsupported pillar. We'll figure it out as we go along. There's time. There's time. 
Um, I should update my character notes, actually, because those are old enough that they still feature Medium as a main character, and Medium doesn't do anything right now. They, they, they show up, I guess, maybe? Medium being, like, th the character's mental powers somewhat manifest as a part of my brain just becomes self-conscious. Now I'm talking to myself, and it's weird. People don't talk to themselves. That's not how, how your brain works. It's not a hook end. It's a stump. Um... We gotta establish that. The asteroid doesn't happen until a long while later, which also plays into, like, Reed's... Um... Reed's... Uh, he, he's apparently a little bit conspiratorial in the original game. He's like, oh, they would never tell us if the world was gonna end. So I wanna extrapolate on that by having them actually not tell anyone <laughs> until it's a way later. Um, there's the parent meeting. But, like, the audition is the big thing. So you, you cut out all the extra surplus scenes, you condense them down into a couple. You... you... how do you do it? You set Nasser up in the opening scene. Um... I guess Mrs. Roberts is important because she gives therapy to the main character. So you have the opening sequences, which is just Blatt, which is mostly the main character. The first day should mostly just be the main character, avoiding people, setting up character traits. Then you have the the next few days are all the main characters. You give them all like a little segment of their own, so they can only do their own one thing. Um, preferably something that works for them. I might rewrite the school schedule so that every character has a section where they're good at and, a, and, and something afterwards they're worse at. Feels a bit mechanical, but whatever, that's just how those things work out. Um, and then by the time Saturday rolls around, the main character is somewhat comfortable. You gotta establish that too. Yeah, you need that somewhat organic, like, adaptiveness. Because otherwise the main character feels a little too competent and confident in the situation, instead of like, I've been here for like a week, and I've talked to everyone, and no one seems to give a shit. I'm fine. I'll live. Ah. Is that it? No, I still got... Uh, I want to clean the fist last, because it's, it's, it's a stupid giant fist. I don't know, I'm just thinking out loud, because what else is this game going to do, you know? It's, it's, a po it's a game you play where you listen to a podcast. And that's fine. I guess you can go that direction if you want to. But, like... I mean, I, I guess I am annoyed when some games, like, they take just enough that you can't actually watch anything. But that's mostly voice acting. That's mostly, like, if they start talking too much. You have to actually, like, read what they're saying. It really depends on what they want to get out of this. Like, how chill do you want it to be? Do you want it to be so chill that the game is like a non-element? It's, it's again, a Sudoku. Do it at your own time. Game doesn't give a crap. I think you might want to change. So apparently in, in Power Wash Simulator, they actually have like custom custom measurements for each object as to when they when they exchange and go, I'm clean. And I think you might want to do this for this too, because uh, it feels like it goes a little too fast. And I don't know why you do that, but like this isn't Power Wash Simulator. There aren't nooks and crannies that are impossible to clean. Although I do notice that the sponge stops sponging sometimes. It's being a bit picky sometimes. I don't like that. It's also very unclear where I'm actually shooting, which is something the Power Wash Simulator does very well. You always know exactly what you're cleaning, because you can see the water. The wawa. So who would buy this? Who is like, I, Sir, I've come to your store. I require a wooden fist. On a screw. <laughs> My answer is, I, I, what do you need it for, sir? Do you need to punch someone? Because I would recommend getting a metal fist in that situation. Also, I wanted to do Born on Bread, the demo, but apparently that game actually released before I got around to it. Get out of here. Yeah, there's no one at the customer desk because the game is done. The bag is gone, so there's none of that. Well, that's it. Mustache. Shopkeeper is... is, is what is this calling me here? I guess it doesn't actually know that it's done. Do you like how the icon actually changes position depending on where it is relative to you? Oh, I don't even have enough time to actually go to bed. Well, this is nice, but I don't know. It, it feels like a game you just play to, to kill some time. You know, it's just on in the background, humming along while you listen to some audiobooks. You know, catch up on your audiobooks or your favorite shows. Don't to pay too much. I mean, I guess that's like a big benefit, right? If you can't do anything wrong, if you can't actually screw up, then eh. You can just do something with your hands. Rub-a-dub-dub. -dub. And that's fine, too. Now, what comes next?